Well, this is Lewis County Farm Forestry's uh, first attempt at an online presentation and meeting. Um, today we have Nick Samaro, who's the president of the Pacific County chapter, going to talk on forest roads and planning, forest roads in general. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nick and we'll go from there. Thanks. Good evening. It's glad to have you guys along with us. Uh, you, you are all muted. And so if you have something that you want questions to ask, uh, unmute yourself and uh, then you can ask the questions. Uh, I'd like to hold the questions until the end. I've got two slideshows, uh, two PowerPoint presentations in this. The first is basically planning and, and it gets into some of the details of what to look for on your road systems as you're driving through them. And then the other one is on a, a project that was funded by NRCS in Pacific County. And uh, it takes you, it'll take you all the way through the inventory of, of the road system, uh, what it looked like when we started and, and uh, why I made the decisions I made on how to correct the problems. And then uh, there's a, a portion of, of it under construction. And then the third part is a before and after slideshow of uh of seg segments of what they look like when we before we started and and what the road looked like when we were finished <clears throat> so i'd like to uh start this out on on planning and forest roads uh successful road management consists basically of two things water management and i've always said that if you have your water managed on your road systems you've got your road systems managed and you'll see in the slide down here a little bit further uh, why that's true. And then the second part is vegetation management. When velocity in your, on the water is doubled, the ability to dislodge particles increases by four times. The size of the particle move increases by 64 times and the quantity of material carried in suspension is 30 times greater. That is just with the, the doubling of the velocity of the water flowing on the road system. <clears throat> Factors that influence velocity, increases in velocity result from an increase in gradient of your road, increase in volume of water on the road and in your ditch lines, a decrease in the width of the cross section of the channel. If your ditches are narrow, you're, you're going to have higher velocities in them. If you get ruts in the road and the water's running down them, you're, you narrow that channel of that water and you get uh, increased scour. And then the smooth texture of your bed. If the, smooth, if the smaller your rock, the smoother your bed is. And the coarser rock, it'll, it'll slow it, tend to slow it down more. Decreases in, in velocity, uh, decrease in volume, uh, lowers the velocity, increase in the cross section width. That is, if you've got a wide drainage, your velocity will be, uh, of the water will be less. And the increase of the roughness of the walls of the channel or the bed of the channel. With existing roads, which many of you have, which most of you have, uh, you've inherited these road systems when, when you purchased your land. So uh, the gradient is fixed the way the road was built. So what we have to work with to manage roads is the volume of water, the cross section width, and the increase in roughness of the sides in the bed of the channel. This is just a little responding here. Let's check what's going on. No. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
<clears throat> landowner considerations. Uh, what are your objectives and your goals? Are you aware of any problem areas on your road systems? Uh, what part of the year do you utilize the road system? And what type of traffic will use the road system in the near, near future, whether it be log trucks, pickups, ATVs? I don't, I don't know if this should just flow or okay and is the road system map and what parts of the road system are the highest priority tools that you want to carry on you and with you when you uh, you're looking at your road systems a shovel power saw racks to cut brush and trees across the road an insulin might sound like kind of like strange uh, uh, driving habits. What I mean by driving habits, if you drive the same track every time on your road, you're gonna create ruts. If you split your tracks and you, every time you go in your road system, you drive in a different track from shoulder to shoulder on your road, you, you can actually reshape your road into a crown. And, that, and you can preserve the integrity of, of your uh, surface of your road and limit your the water buildup on it. The time of the year when you look at what, what's to be done, take inventory of your road systems. The dry season is a little more difficult to inventory. Uh, intermittent springs, water ponding may be missed. If you do your do inventory in the rainy, rainy season, vegetation is not as likely to conceal critical features. Problems with water are more obvious. And inter, intermittent springs are active. Water running in ruts or tire tracks. You want to in, inventory your road systems after storms and, and large rain events. And that, that way you can detect any problems that you may be having. And sometimes you can correct those with a shovel that, that if you, you know, to prevent more serious and expensive damage, you know, in a short period of time. Road surface condition and shape. This is what you call an incised road or a reverse crown. Uh, the sides are higher. You, you look from this point to this point, and that's probably the original uh, grade of that road system. And over the years, the erosion and traffic on that has moved that much material out, out of the out of the road system. A rutted road, uh, you'll, you got each tire track, and you got water running in them. You'll see these really evident in the rainy season. And then when, when your water starts, it gets to such uh, high volumes and, and high velocities, it will begin to scour and carry sediment off your road and, and into the streams and, and waterways. A crowned road, it sheds water throughout, and it's one of the best ways to shape a road to disperse water. Half the water goes off to the outside edge, the other half goes into the inside edge. Uh, there's also, you can also have an in-sloped road, which is a flat, flat grade that slopes toward the bank, or an outsloped road, which slopes towards the outside edge. Uh, these are, are valuable uh, shapes at times, but you have to be cautious when you use them and where you use them. Road grades. This is a flat road grade. And grades are measured in percentage. This is a this one's a, a relatively steep. I think this one was around 23%. Road grade is, is measured in percent, and that and that percent is feet of vertical elevation change in a horizontal and a hundred feet of horizontal distance. So if you have a five percent slope, 
that you're going to raise five feet in elevation and 100 feet of horizontal distance. Transition of road drainage structures, uh, outlet erosion. This is what is often classified as a shotgun culvert. Uh, it outlets above the uh, the draw, and the water uh, will tend will erode the uh, fill slope. The fill slope has eroded and begun to settle, and it pulled pull that the culvert apart at this point. And so that what you have is you got a separated pipe and your, your fill slope is uh, is eroding and uh, disappearing down the down into the stream. And this this a lot of this could have been because when they added a section on that pipe, that outside edge was the compaction was not sufficient underneath it to, to keep it from settling. Fill drainage structures. <clears throat> this one is a an old punch and fill. What a punch and fill is, it's usually two logs that are laid in the bottom of the draw, and then a lot of them they split uh, uh, cedar and laid cedar across the top and then filled over the top of them. Over the years, those cedar slabs will rot out, and and the fill begins to just. Uh, Collapse and and that all goes down in through the stream. This is this is on a fish bearing stream. This is another another look another. This is looking at it from the stream, up, up, up looking downstream. And this this was corrected by a triple F double P project, a farm family forest fish passage program. Uh, through DNR, uh, put a bridge, remove the fill, and put a bridge in on this one. This this one is uh, the dogs there. I think they just figured out I didn't know what I was looking at, so they were pointing it out to me. But this is a, a it's eroding from underneath, and that was also done with a, a completed or corrected on with an NRCS project which is a natural resources conservation service. Proper culvert installation. Uh, you can see by the debris along the side of the road in the heavy rain, this, this water goes past the culvert. And as that water uh, uh, comes up, this double wall plastic pipe will float. And, uh, and I think what happened was when they put the pipe in, they dug the lay of the pipe, and then when they got got to about about in this point in here, they came up quick, and and there was a, a hollow left under the bed of the pipe, and it looked good when it, when the road was built and finished, but as you as the trucks hauled logs out of here, it that settled and it forced that uh, pipe down where the void was underneath it, and it and it brought the inlet up. This is a, a culvert installation on a slope, uh, a well installed culvert. Uh, it's skewed to the center line, which means it runs downhill. So you don't turn the water at, at a sharp angle. Anytime you turn water at a 90 degree angle, uh, the water slows down and it, de it uh, deposits all the sediment at the inlet of the pipe and it'll fill the pipe. And the back slope, you want to carry your back slope up. And so that you don't have the overhang uh, sloughing in, into the ditch, and and usually a you know a width of the bucket, uh, a flat spot in front of the pipe to form a catch basin. Stability of back slopes. This is a uh, there's many things going on in this photo. Uh, this is basically a siltstone geology that they unravel. You see the, down in the lower part of this the loose material that has raveled off of the off of the slope, and and that ravel is is broken loose by wetting and and drying and freezing and thawing, and and it it'll continue to move along this top edge. You'll see the vegetation up here is holding this together, but it's being undermined 
at this point right here, a big chunk of that that uh, overhang has has come out, collapsed out of there and came down into the ditch. And when you're doing your inventory on your road systems in the rain or stuff, you'll you'll come across places where you might have a plug in the ditch. And this is where your shovel comes in handy, and you can and you can train that water to go back into the ditch rather than to come into this area, which is a slump area. And you can tell this is a slump area because you, this is the high ground here and, and you look and you come down through there and it's kind of like a, a parabolic arc. And it's like a teaspoon net that if you tip a teaspoon on, on its tip, your slides and your slumps, will, the, the, the escarpment of those will look like that back of that teaspoon or the front of that teaspoon. And that, that'll give you an indication that you have a slow earth movement in this situation and you don't want water co coming into this. This is a place where an in-slope road would work good and this is a place where a berm on the outside edge is beneficial to keep water from entering the, this uh, stress, stress zone uh, of this uh, slump. This is another slump. This this one was a, a, a construction error that created this, and it's it's broken. You see the the stress crack back up in here, and then there was another one way up this way too. But when this this was dug out, there was a culvert right here, and when when it was that culvert was installed, they pushed a log in in on that fill, and that log happened to hit that band. Where the culvert was joined just right and it pushed through that pushed through that band and and the, the pipe sold it in and water water uh, and and was forced to drain through the slope and and created this uh, slump area this is another slump you'll see right in through here where where there's a break uh, this is a little end of a hog back and this is kind of in the head of the draw, and it's just a place for this fill and the water moving through it, and, and it's a, a slow moving uh, mass movement, and that you got to keep graded out. And, uh, you know, it's an expensive fix. One of the things that you could do, you could put sub drain in a ditch and, and take care of that water, uh, try to take care of that water without you know, and uh, slow that uh, movement down. <clears throat> this is a slide. Um, what happened here was they had logged a, a unit up, up the road grade from this point, about a mile and a mile and a half. And there were several cross drains and the top, the uppermost cross drain in that logged off unit got a stick across it and it plugged up and this was in a heavy rain event and then every culvert cross drain on below that plugged up and so the water was running like a river right down the, the that road it took the road right down to the bedrock and this is where it came off and uh this and into the headwaters of of ellis creek in Pacific county so that's uh, another reason why you want to uh, keep your culverts open. And this is another shot of, of that slide from before. It's, it's taken from a little different angle, and you can kind of see the edge, uh, the top edge of the, the escarpment of, of that, that slow mass movement. <clears throat> this is another shot of it where it's, it's much more pronounced. You can see how far down that, that movement is actually occurring. Uh, this road surface scour, uh, this is just an unmaintained road. Uh, it's developed berms on the outside. And uh, some, of the, some of these rills were, were pretty deep. Then uh, this, another surface scour, you'll see up in here in the circle, you see the, the, just the bare dirt underneath the rock. You see the sediment uh, deposition here in, in the sag point, which is your lowest point on your grade. 
uh, it comes downhill this way and uphill down this way. And these are usually located in stream crossings and there's culverts and this becomes a, a primary sediment source to the stream systems. On-site erosion impact or off-site erosion impact. Uh, I had a cranberry grower down in Grayland was, was telling me about he was having all this sediment come into his stream or into his uh, uh, sump that they irrigated out of and, and he was always having this problem. So I, I took a little travel up the road and you can see where it flattens out, you know, the sediment is settling down and, and the grade starts increasing and, and uh, so you don't have the sediment settling here. And as you go up the road, you'll see up in here, we, we're starting to get into some real major erosion as your grade gets steeper. It, it has moved a tremendous, that's a washer or dryer uh, somebody threw in there. But you look back in here, this all this material eroded out of it. Something plugged a ditch up here and it created a new channel of erosion. There's there's hundred yards, hundreds of yards of material that have come off of this uh, ditch line. All right, where's my next slide? And as you go on up, that quick slide there was where where the ATVs had uh, built a little bridge. Guys using ATVs built a little bridge there to get across. And this is the source of the problem. They got a, a borrow pit for fill and all the water is draining off this borrow, borrow pit and it's basically a sand. And so at this point right here, this is where the top of the head cutting is. And when you see this kind of erosion in a ditch line, or you see a spot where it's eroding and, and you follow that ditch line up, you get to the point where, where it begins. And this is the point where your volume of water in that ditch line gets, is, is enough to where it overcomes the shear stress in the soils. And it begins to uh, dislodge the soil and erode it. At this point, if you were to be able to take that water out of there, then then you would have uh, solved all the problems on down below. But there was a tremendous amount of work that would have been was needed up in this pit area to take care of the water that was intercepted here and brought down. And uh, uh, but these are these are some things that that will really create some big problems with the road systems down slope downgrade from it. Culvert placements in slumps. This is that this is a third picture of that slump. You got a culvert draining into this stress crack. Uh, you see fresh fresh material here. We've got fresh material down in here right along the escarpment. This this entire area here is still moving. When you dump your water into these stress cracks that lubricates it and uh, it it accelerates uh, mass movement. So what you want to do is you want to get rid of that water above this slope or above this uh, uh, slump area or carry it down the ditch line past it and then outlet it either on on the bank side uh, or you know find a safe place to, with a culvert. And this is where you could Put put a uh, leave a berm on the inside, on the outside of your road, and in slope it towards the ditch to prevent water from uh, entering that uh, stressed area. This is a ditch line, uh, deep sandstone country, uh, right in this area. This had slumped down and plugged the ditch. You can see the culvert right here in the bottom and there's a stake mark in the end of it. What happened was is this ditch plugged up from this slump and it forced the water over to the outside of that fill. And this is where it saturated the fill on the outside and this is at the road. 
uh, right at the road, shoulder of the road. Looking down the draw, this is what happened. When that fill flat saturated on that road and it let go, it took this whole draw out all the way down to the bottom of the canyon, right down to the sandstone. And so all of this material that come up here could have been thousands of yards of material, uh, all went into that stream to go on, uh, go on down into the bigger fish bearing uh, stretches below. <clears throat> As we were talking about it, obstructed drainage structure, uh, drainages, structures. Uh, this is the worst kind of a culvert installation you can ever put in is a double pipe or a triple pipe. Uh, a lot of times they put in a small pipe. This is probably the original pipe, an 18 inch. And then they put it, it didn't handle the water, so they put a 24 in and, and something got down, you got these chunks in here and it doesn't have to be a big chunk like this, uh, just a little alder twig, you know, half an inch in diameter can span across there and, and catch leaves and, and, and plug that and create the problem. And, and this is what happened. It, it went down this road and it took it right down to bedrock. There was so much water volume flowing. Went on and down further. This is where it left the road, and it took. I don't. Yeah, there. It took it. This took it. All of the material right down to bedrock again. And this is really in the high country, steep country, and the headwaters of the Grays River drainage. And so there's there's impacts a long ways downstream that happen when these with with these types of situations. A lot of old road construction, uh, they, they put, put their pipe culverts in high. Uh, sometimes they did that so they'd have a water pond uh, for firefighting if they needed it. Uh, sometimes it was just the way that uh, they built the road. They put part of a fill in then put the pipe in. So you end up with a pond on the upper side and then the road is right here, and you can kind of see the escarpment of, of uh, the what happened when that fill saturated. This is looking at the from the set uh, where the fill is collapsed, and once again looking down slope, all of this material is headed down slope slope into the stream. Before and after <coughs> pictures. Uh, Got a, a road system here that is highly rut, rutted. Uh, this was about a 20% grade slope. You see the alder and the ditch lines and the gad ruts and, and it's washed right through the pit run rock that was the road surface and it's, and it's eroding this, the uh, subgrade. This is after the, it was corrected. Uh, a ditch was pulled. And you'll notice along the back slope, there's, the backslope isn't disturbed any more than just what was necessary to get a ditch line in it. And so by not disturbing the rest of that backslope, it's all stabilized. So you really minimize your erosion that you get uh, during your reconstruction period. And it's a known fact that, that if you build a new road or you, you build a new road, it takes five years before the erosion on that new road construction returns to background level. So the more vegetation in your reconstruction that, that you can save on those cut slopes, don't undermine your cut slope, but you know, take our slope, keep slope this bottom too. You don't want to leave it vertical because then that'll start this whole slope eroding. But but leave as much vegetation, only go through there as light, light as you can and, and as, with as little disturbance. And the ditch was pulled, this is shape, the ditch was pulled, then the burns on the outside were all rolled off so that you had good drainage on the outside over the, over the bank. You didn't have a buildup of the water. The water can leave the water uh, road surface. Uh, very near the point where the, the road surface intercepts the rainfall. 
And another thing that you look here, you look at the cat tracks when we when we push that outside edge off, we started at the top so that all the tracks angle off to the side downhill. This is just another little thing that helps take that water away from that the travel way of that road system. If you started from the bottom, you you would angle those tracks up and it would tend to bring that road system that that uh, water back into the center of the road system. Uh, this is <clears throat> some uh, roadside vegetation. Uh, we don't like to leave anything unplanted, you know, so we plant between the ditch lines a lot of times and, and we plant the outside edges. You look at the, the ditch line on this, this segment is back in here behind these trees and here's the back slope of your road. You look at this, this root collar on this tree, you look at the root collar on that uh, on that tree on the other side of the road, you, you, you draw a straight line across, the horizontal line across there, you're looking at about a three or a four foot uh, a dip in the center of that road, and that's, that's, ero that's eroded over time, because when this road was hauled over, it was, it was at those root collars in, in elevation, so there's been a tremendous amount of erosion that's come down off of this road system and, and down into the stream. This is some road construction. Uh, <clears throat> you'll notice there's a lot of fresh dirt off to the other side and you know, and then, then you, there's quite a bit of, you know, slope between the ditch line down here. What was done in this area, this was relatively flat ground, and so we went down further out and brought material out up into the center to build that road, get that road system up above the outside so that we, we would have positive drainage of the subgrade uh, in, away from the road. And then when that road system is, is uh, that subgrade is crowned and then the ditch is put in a foot below the surface of the subgrade, that, that drains the subgrade, which remains the strength of, the, of your road system and the integrity of the road system. To regress a little bit to the situation before this, where you had the, the ruts in the road system that had eroded, if you were to, to just, if you were to just add rock to that and, and shape your road system, you would always have that water flow through the rock because your rock is, is uh, uh, porous and and you and if you don't get rid of those ruts or those rills in there that have been eroded, uh, you'll tend to have soft spots in your road and the erosion from from below. This is another section of flat ground or road construction. Uh, we went quite a ways off the road side of the road to get positive drainage of the road system in through here too, and so. Uh, you know, all the decks logged. There was there was a tremendous amount of wood on this road. So, so you want to keep your road road grades above and have positive drainage into them, and it'll save you a lot of money and a lot of headaches down the road. This is a road system that was put to bed. I went with my son, and uh, we were walking up this road system there last fall. I thought this is a good slide. This is a, a road that's been put well put to bed after they were logging. Uh, it's probably 20, 25 year old, maybe a little bit older, second growth. You have a good ditch line in here. Uh, you have no berms on the outside. Uh, you don't have uh, uh, much anything planted uh, between the top of the back slope and the out slope. Uh, you got a few. Uh, volunteer alders that are a little bit, but you know they were left there, and it, they don't impede the maintenance of the road system. <clears throat> so, once you finish harvesting a unit, and you you got your tree planters in there, don't tell them that you don't want any trees planted from the top of the back slope to the top of the out slope, and even you know. You, you might want to hold it back another three or four feet so that, you know, when you come in with a grader or a cat with a six-way blade, 
you can pull that outside edge in and you got room you got plenty of room to where you can maintain positive drainage off of your road system you want to clean your ditches after you're done logging uh if if you've got uh if your road rutted bad and you've got rock that sometimes bladed off to the outside and you're done logging in there pull that rock in the into in, into your road system uh, if you if you do this when when you're logging you know you can save a lot of a lot of uh, rock that way uh, if it gets bad and you do it while you're logging then then you end up with a big mess but when when you're done logging in there and you, you're done with the heavy traffic if you pull that rock and you shape that road bring that rock back into the middle you know within a year it's going to set up fairly good and so what you're doing is is you're preserving the expense of that rock by keeping it on your road system and then when when you need your road system again you go in and you open that road up and you you widen it out to, to what you need you know uh, to, to haul uh, heavy loads and, and truck traffic on it whereas otherwise when you're not logging in there all you need is enough width for the pickup and and uh, and a good turnaround on the end when you clean your culverts you want to really pay attention to the outlet of your culverts also because if you have woody debris that's above the bottom of the outlet of your culvert that woody debris will will filter out any sediment that comes down out through that pipe and what happens is and i've seen this over and over and over again is that 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 silts up and then the next thing you know, you've got a full pipe of silt from the outlet all the way up to the inlet. And those are those are really a bear to clean. And and then then you got water from the ditch line running down your roads and scouring and, and uh, really damaging your road systems. So that's that's the basics of, of what to look for and, and how things are. Uh, I just took this shot. It's, this is up on a Kapowson tree farm, and Mount Rainier was in the background, really nice that day. And but the mountain didn't. But I thought, well, you know, this shows just a, a, a good layout of a road. We're still in the surfacing, so it doesn't look very clean. So some of the things to look at, and and from here we'll go into a PowerPoint uh, on a on an NRCS project. Uh, believe it or not, this is not intended to be a stream. This is that the actual road system. This is at the you know uh, the low part of the road uh, system. There's about a half a mile of road above this. Another 800 feet of a skid road that had uh, grades of upwards of 20 percent on that tied into another road system above and also create or also contributed uh, water flow to into the ditch system and, and the road system what we're going to do is we're just going to take and walk up through the system and and look at what it was like before we started on it and this is an area here where some of the water had run off and the erosion had happened. This is once again a uh, successful road management, uh, water management, and vegetation management. And I'll skip this. We already talked about velocity, and and this just explains that we're we're starting at the bottom, bottom and walking uphill, and we're looking at all the things that are contributing to uh, sediment delivery to a fish bearing stream at the bottom.
this is the road system. This is where the, the water was uh, leaving the road. This is the sag point on this road system. It goes uphill this way and, uh, and uphill the, uh, the other way. Uh, the stream left the, was leaving the road at this point at one time, and, and then it started leaving it, it up in this, uh, this point, point up here. Uh, And this is all. This is uh, on above where the stream stream is out in the middle of the road, depositing uh, sediment. On up, the stream is actually back over in here. You can see the fresh water, the clean water, and then it, you can see where some of it's bleeding in here, and there's more of that's bleeding in further up here. And if you look down in the bottom here, is this. Uh, Kind of orange colored material that's all siltstone that that's eroded uh, from the ditch lines and the, and the road system from up above and and has been carried uh, on the road in in the heavy flows during the winter time as you can see it's pretty mushy and soft as we're starting to climb at a higher uh, at a steeper grade and you can see where it's starting to, you, your rills are developing, it's cutting and it's carrying the sediment and it's dropping the bigger sediment as when the, the flows slow down, uh, deposition begins here and goes on, on down the road. The water qu quantity on the road system and the velocity is sufficient enough to carry more sediment and it's also sufficient to erode the, the road the surface of the road. This is the ditch line, and you can see all of the fresh sediment in this ditch. Uh, this, this, these, the dates on these uh, slides are are the date uh, the date that these photos were taken, and you'll see that they planted planted the shoulder of the road. And they can't keep, they can't maintain the road system because the trees are in the way. Uh, we have extreme ditch erosion and excess, excessive ditch width and depth from, from it eroding. And the ditch is nearly as wide as the remaining road surface. And, and as I said, the trees between the ditch line and the road surface uh, impedes maintenance of the system. This is a 12 inch culvert that was installed uh, right below the previous slide and it was intended to handle all that water. It was put together, it was put in at a 90, 90 degree angle to the site of uh, center line and all the material uh, settled out. And this is the inlet of the culvert right here. And all of this is is a sediment that uh, when the water slowed down, it dropped it down. And there's so much sediment that came down out of this ditch line over the years. It, it had a sizable alluvial fan, which there was a fish bearing stream that ran through here and it totally buried that fish bearing stream and forced it down back and then back onto the road that we saw in the earlier slides. This is some erosion erosion on the, on the road system. Uh, you'll see these little ditch dams. These are twigs and stuff. Uh, they'll they'll flow and and they'll uh, uh, kind of break the water flow a little bit and then go around. And this most of your water is running right right down this this ditch line and and you you can see that it's eroded through the surface rock. Once again, if you look from from the collar root collar across. You know, there's there's two three feet of uh, erosion in there almost because that's just just above Mike's legs uh, knees there where he's at. And this right here is a a draw of what is determined to be a fish bearing stream. Uh, there's no drainage in it. I I believe there might have been a punching culvert in there at one time, but it silted up to to the road level, and the outfall is about about 12 feet. Uh, below the outside of the road surface here. And this this is the uh, 
the uphill side of the draw and and totally filled and, you, and the water is now coming out and going down the, down the road partially and and partially into the, the ditch there were three draws in here along this road system that had no drainage in them and and that's what, that's what we term as water piracy is when you take water out of one draw you carry it down the ditch line to another draw and then you put in a pipe there. And it used to be a standard practice at a lot of times that to save on culverts and save money on building roads, they did that. But what happens is, is each one of these draws over its lifetime, it was, it was shaped by geologic and, and hydrologic processes to the water that, that was it needed to carry. So when you pull water out of other draws, you increase the volume in the draw where you dump it and you end up with some real severe erosion problems uh, uh, on down below and on the outfall of these, these streams where you did out, uh, uh, finally take it across the road. Just another, how this is coming down, down below here and, and still eroding. This is a, Above it a little ways, uh, you look at the root collar here, and you look at the root collar, and the, the water running down the road, uh, ATVs using this, uh, tremendous amount of volume of material has, has come down this, this entire road system uh, down to the bottom. Uh, this is a little bit further up the road system. Uh, once again, you'll see the berms on the outside because they couldn't be maintained, and uh, as it eroded, and if they did some shaping in there, uh, it, it just get, kept getting deeper and more erosion went on down the hill. The same thing, you'll notice how high the uh, banks on the inside and the outside are up through this. There's erosion through the rock down into the subgrade. Uh, this is another this is water from the third draw on the travel way that's that's coming into it and running down the road system. And once again, you see the the ditch little debris dams along the way that that uh, filter out and kind of alter the flow. <clears throat> this is a an interesting slide. This slide was taken in March of 2011, and this is just below where the the uh, skid road goes uphill. All of this in here and all of this material in through here is, has come down down that skid road and is, is bleeding across the road system to the outside and some down the road. And this is down below this and, and you can see the, the, the water reel and, and the scour that's happening. If this, if this were a sandy material uh, or substrate, uh, more erodible than the heavy clay that it was. I've seen uh, river outwash roads and river outwash gravels that were scoured 15 to 20 feet deep, and and sometimes there was a, a walk path on the inside where you might be able to walk enough width to walk, and all the rest of the road went on on down, and it was just from scour of water flow uh, from sometimes a couple miles that that didn't have a have an outlet. You start to see the size of the particles down in here. And this was this was taken on the 21st of January after a, a major rainfall. And this is uh, erosion sediment from that eroded off of the uh, skid trail up above. This, if you inventory this in the summertime, this this vegeta vegetation will come up through this, and it, it won't be as obvious as it is right afterwards. And uh, so, if you if you tra got a trained eye and you look closely, you can see what's happening. But this is why it's critical that you uh, check your systems out after uh, heavy rainfall uh, events uh, during the wet season. And once again, you can see the size of the particle, getting an idea of the size of the particles. They're, they're pretty good sized particles in, that are moving down. And there's a, this is even a, a, a better uh, shot of, of what has recently eroded. 
And this, you think about this, this has been going on for probably 20, 30 years. I think this stand is uh, this time in 2015 was probably 25 years old. And so you've had this thing, this erosion going on for, for that many years. And, and it's a tremendous amount that's delivered to a stream. And this, this stream actually goes down through the uh, Riverdale area of Raymond and, and to, into the Willapaw River. Now, this is on the skid trail. And you'll see how deep this, this reel is here. This is probably a foot or so deeper than the rest of this. Then when you look at, at, at the where the root colors are once again, and you you draw a straight line across there, you know some some places in here was four or five feet deep, and so you know that when they logged this, that that skid road was was uh, fairly flat. So over the years, there's just a tremendous amount of yardage of material that's that's come on down the road system. And this is from above looking down. And if you look at root color, root color, that's probably six, seven feet there of, of erosion. Okay, at this point we we started reconstruction, and and, and you look you look at these road systems, uh, how narrow it is. Uh, it's been my experience that on the there's there's enough width there. That you'll you'll have your the width that you need once you shape the road systems up, you'll have enough width to have your road so that you don't need to go into these banks. And once again, you know, I talked to the contractor and I told him I said, you know, don't don't take this material this uh, vegetation off of here because that that's uh, stabilized, and so form your ditch so that you can carry that slope on down. And still, and you still got to, Usually, you'll have a enough width uh, in that by the time you pull your berms and shape your road system that uh, you're you're not going to be in want of, of width for for your subgrade. And this, you know, you look at this and you think, boy, that's awful narrow. I'm not going to have 14 feet, and another another four feet for ditch and and whatnot. Because usually on a single laden road. Uh, with a ditch, you're going to need a minimum of 18 feet on a subgrade uh, because you've got if you put a foot uh, deep ditch, you got a one and a half to one slope on on the ditch, and and so if you go down a foot, you're coming into your road into your roads uh, there are three feet. So you need about 18 feet at the minimum on on a on a subgrade. Uh, this is our coming along we have some more timber yet that hasn't been cut on the outside edge there but but it's starting to take shape got the ditch line in you, you know you, you you can see because of the trees here we're not able to get that outside half of the crown in yet but this is just in the middle of construction uh that's up up from that a little bit where you know the the timber has been removed Another thing about daylighting your roads, if you keep your roads daylighted from top of the slope to the uh, you have a cut slope to the top of your fill slope, that provides air movement on that road system. And that air movement is real critical in keeping, keeping your road systems dry. This is looking from, and these stations, what a station is, one station is 100 feet. And and road lengths when they're mapped out and laid out for construction or reconstruction are are always stationed out. And so if you have a station six plus oh five, that means you're six hundred and five feet away from where they started. And where this uh, project started was on the first slide where we talked about where the water left the road at at, at one time, and then just above that. You know, it was leaving the road at the time we were here. So, so this is is uh, we're looking at just where we're starting to to get uh, to climb the hill up out of the flat. And if you look, this stake here is at that inlet of that 12-inch culvert. 
If you look at this side slope here, you'll see the, the deposition material, the, the brownish colored material on top of the black material in here. This black material was actually the bottom of, or close to the bottom of what was the fish stream that is now running back through the timber, back in through here and crossing the road down below. So this this is all the alluvial fan down in, in down in and around here that was formed from the years of erosion that came down this road system. So what I had the contractor do in here, it was it was in a, a dry part of the the summer. So I had him pull all the material that had eroded in here, pull all that material into the center of the road, and build that road system up because. This road originally was lower than than the the outside topography, and and we couldn't get drainage off of that side. So there was enough material that came out of the out of the ditch, and that we could pull out by widening this out to get that get positive drainage off of that road system, and uh, and and we had a good ditch that that carried this. This landowner also has applications in for. Of the family forest fish passage program to correct these uh, fish passage problems. This one and, and the one up slope up upgrade from it. So what we did is we just we constructed a good ditch so that we we had we could restore the integrity of the road system and and then once he gets funded for to put the culverts in or the fish passage uh, structures in, well then you know, we'll still have, still have a good ditch, but we're not, we're not, we've taken care of the erosion problems that, that were existing on it before we started the project. This is a finished grade uh, on up, as we're going uphill, you know, you see the slope, the slope on this, uh, it's a little bit steeper than what the, the natural slope came out, but when this road was probably built, there were no, there was no slopes, they probably cut them vertical, and so over the years, you know, they just raveled down and 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 obtained their natural angle of repose uh, just through normal er erosion. And this is 1,200 uh, from station uh, 1,200 to uh, 1,400 feet, 200 foot stretch of, of the ditch, compacted uh, subgrade, uh, good drainage uh, both into the ditch and and out out to the outslope. <clears throat> this culvert, this was one of the places that I was glad to see a uh, DNR compliance forester come out to a project that I did or I was working on and had DNR come out and look at this as as, uh, as we were going along. I had some questions and, and that and, and I, I wanted to put this culvert in right at the bottom of the draw. This is a this is that first fish passage. Uh, draw that I talked about. And so I wanted to put this uh, culvert down out of the way that when, when that fish passage was corrected, this would still work as a as a, an overflow pipe, if, if not if, but when the beavers got into it and plugged the other one. And not only that, but in the interim, we took all of the water out of this draw and we put it back into into the draw on the lower side of the road and, and took it out of the ditch line. So uh, what what the compliance officer from DNR said was, you know, I could write you up and I, I had trouble getting getting the okay to, to put this pipe in through the upper channels. And so anyway, he says, I could write, I could cite you right here. So I got my pipe in there where I wanted it and, and we took care of the drainage problem on down the road. This is one of the draws up above. Uh, there's a draw came coming in here, and then there's a draw coming uh, down this way too. And so this is a 24-inch pipe. This is a perennial stream. Uh, it's non-fish bearing, but perennial streams uh, all require a 24-inch culvert. Put rock in here to stabilize the flow. <clears throat> And uh, and then rock the the head wall of the culvert. You can see how the culvert is skewed, so that we don't have to turn the water 
uh, at a hard angle on where most of the water flow is coming from. This is the outlet of the culvert. Uh, the outlet's uh, got rock, uh, coarse rock put in there just to uh, dissipate the energy of the water. Uh, double wall pipes, uh, they accelerate water tremendously. Uh, and so you need to get rid of that uh, that energy, and this is a, this is a good way to do that. Uh, don't leave these kind of sticks in here. This is still during construction, so it wasn't the final cleanup wasn't done because these these can capture more more debris and and put, plug up the outlet of the pipe. This is another inlet. Uh, we put a cross drain here just before that first uh, fish pipe and uh, to take the water out of the, uh, the ditch line and any sediment that might be coming, putting it onto the forest floor before it got into the stream. This is the outlet of that culvert. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, if I have a tree that's, that's in there somewhere, I'll, I'll outlet that culvert in if, if it doesn't obstruct the, the flow and, and that, that tree stump and that root system will, uh, will act as an energy dissipator. You want to be careful with alder and willow on, on inlets and outlets of pipe, because if they're too close, uh, the roots will, will go up into the pipe and, they'll, and sediment will collect on them. And then pretty soon you got move, more roots and, and I pulled beaver tails out of inlets of pipe that were 15 feet long and half half the depth of the pipe and they were all willow or alder roots that, that were in there obstructing the flow of the water. This is uh, in the process of surfacing the grade, uh, put 60 yards to the station uh, because of the soil tights and, and, uh, and the, the wetness of the ground. Another inlet of the culvert. Of the culvert. Just looking up grade, and then you see the inlets and and the surfacing. This is looking from the bottom where we started, and you can see the positive drainage to the fourth floor on the outside, and and the drainage in the ditch. And once and we've gotten rid of the, the, all the water that was coming down this road uh, that was showing in the in the original. Uh, inventory of the, of the road system. These are before and afters. Uh, this is the same at the same place. Uh, tremendous amount of difference, you know. Uh, you got positive drainage. Uh, Look when you go in and check these things after heavy rainfalls. Check for things that are falling into ditches, uh, uh, small sticks across inlets or outlets of the culverts. Uh, look for slumps or or water where it's getting back on the road system. This pickup is sitting where these ATV this ATV was. And then on the skid trail, we water barred the skid trails. Water bars are critical how you build them. Uh, you want them to run at least 45 degrees to the center line. Uh, that, that, that's to try to keep your water velocities to carry whatever sediment are coming into that water bar to carry it out. It's critical that your outlets of your water bars are clean that there's no debris or a pile of dirt at the end because because what's going to happen is is that's going to silt up and pretty soon your your whole water bar is going to silt and the water's going back down the road. And what you want to do on this uphill side of that, you want to tie that water bar into that back slope because if you tie it in if you don't tie it into the back slope, that if a, if something gets in here and plugs that water bar or sometimes the water will just blow on, blow by it, and uh, you'll you'll be you'll have a an unfunctioning water bar. 
And this is a this is uh, another a water bar right up here. And this is just some of the uh, erosion that we're trying to uh, abate. There's a good picture of the water bar. It's tied into the back slope here, and it takes it and daylights out out the other way. Viewed 30 to 45 degrees from center line and across to the entire trail, ties into the back slope on the trail, and the outlet is clear of all debris and it drains freely. This is looking down downhill. And another shot. There's a lot of this is was highly eroded in, in through here. And so when we when we uh, corrected all of the drainage problems and, and got water back where it, want, where it should be, uh, these will cover up. 2019, I walked up through here because I was planning on having a uh, field tour this summer on this project. And this is what the road looks like five years later. Uh, shape is still good. And then we're starting to get into talking about our vegetation management. Uh, you can see the scotch broom come, starting to come in. Getting into thicker scotch broom. This is just where we started the upgrade. And I talked about the ditch being behind the trees and, and this type of thing. On up, on up the slope from here, or was grade from here, there was scotch broom across the entire road. That was probably 10 feet tall, and and the only thing, only way you could get through it was on the oak trails in it, and the landowner just hadn't, you know, just hadn't been paying attention and out of sight, out of mind, and and that's another reason why it's important to keep track of your road systems, look at them every year, and you know you can, uh, you know, if you like to, if you can spray, you know, spray it and and keep it clean. Uh, if you don't want to use spray, you can do it mechanically uh, by pulling that stuff, uh, scotch broom and, and those types of things out. But if you keep up with it on an annual basis, it's it's not a big deal. But but when it gets away from you, then it becomes an expensive, expensive process. And so as you manage your road systems annually and 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 travel your road systems through your summers and the winters and take care of these little issues, you know, for nickels and dimes, it, it'll save you money. The co total cost on this project, I think was $40,000 and NRCS paid uh, about 30,000 of it. So 75% is what, what NRCS usually figures their uh, incentive payments to be to, to correct uh, uh, resource concerns. So oh, that's that's it for today. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, I'll be glad to answer them for you now.